Today we're talking about China's eccentric neighbor Japan. Because, whoop, well, their Federal Reserve is doing some crazy things. Now I know when you hear, oh, well, Federal Reserve is doing something crazy, it's like hearing Bob from accounting decided to order a second beer. How wild! Japan's central bank is different though, as they're more eccentric than even people who are a little too into Japan. In 2016, we've seen them put in a negative interest rate, which made it so that depositors actually had to pay money to save their money in institutions, leading to the number one financial institution in that nation being under a mattress. Today though, they're back at it with a new idea. First, what's the problem with Japan's economy that we're trying to solve? Well, it has to do with what I just mentioned. What's the difference between the bottom of your mattress and a Japanese bank? Oh man, my mind went to some dirty places. But the difference is that your mattress doesn't make investments. Don't worry, it's not like nobody's investing in Japanese industry. From the Bank of Japan here behind me, which it's easy to forget has been stimulating more aggressively than anybody else for the last few years. Its balance sheet is now worth roughly three quarters of Japanese GDP. Oh man, the Japanese government is the lead investor in their own industries? That's the political equivalent of me telling you my dad is the main investor in this channel. It is not a good look. If you compare their investment to that of other Federal Reserves, it's clear that something is going on. Wow, they own more Japanese assets than my freshman year roommate. Yeah, it was one of those situations where you had to clarify as soon as you brought a girl back. So what's the problem with the Bank of Japan investing in Japanese companies? I mean, last time I checked, Japanese companies are doing just fine. People are buying Toyotas and Nintendos, so I think we can extrapolate from that that their entire economy is probably good. Well, actually, if you look at their GDP growth, while it's certainly not numbers to call home about, they're growing pretty well for the most part. The Japanese Federal Reserve has been on stimulus mode since 2013, and basically through a combination of literally charging money for people to save money and the government buying bonds in exchange for cash that they're printing, the government thought, well, there's only one place you can put all this money we're giving you, and that's buying stuff. Only problem was, again, people aren't spending as much as they used to. Private consumption grew by a weaker than expected 0.2% in the second quarter. And companies aren't spending either. Capital expenditure fell by 0.4%. A strong yen is making Japanese goods more expensive. A fall in overseas demand knocked a third of a percent off GDP. Last month, the Bank of Japan stepped up its purchases of bonds. The program pumps billions of dollars of cash into the economy each year to try and boost spending. That was reported two years and quite a few billion yen in investment ago. But unfortunately, not much has changed. Let me read out a few stats about how crazy this is getting. Japan is now among the biggest shareholders in a host of large companies, from fast retailing co to semiconductor firm Advantest Corp. And even more significantly, Japan owns three quarters of all shares in Japan's exchange traded funds. I think that this country might be the first to, completely accidentally, have a communist revolution. Wait, the government owns all the major industries now? Huh. This leads to all sorts of problems that are so wacky as long as you're not Japanese, you might find them pretty funny. Nobody wants the Japanese corporate bonds, so the Japanese government keeps buying them to give them any value. Because, you know, worthless companies are pretty much the worst thing that can happen to an economy. Behind losing a world war, of course. Well, they have announced that they're going to ease up on their five year bond buying shopping spree because they own so much of this market, there are legitimate concerns that the Federal Reserve selling off any assets could trigger a huge decline in the market. Because there is no market. And if the only person buying this stuff starts selling it, well again, that's really not a good look and that would be pretty bad for Japan. So why is there no market for these financial assets? Well, something completely unrelated. We expect interest rates to rise somewhat further and the size of our balance sheet to gradually shrink. 
That was Federal Reserve Chairman and man to talk about more than any other news station, Jerome Powell, talking about America continuing to raise our interest rates. Bear with me, because I'm imagining that for some of you out there, the last 20 seconds sounded like listening to people speak in tongues. If you compare Japan's interest rates to the rest of the world, it's consistently the lowest, except for a little dip where the Eurozone goes lower. And if you're curious about that, I've covered that in a different video. Sorry for the bit of self-promotion. Anyways, why does having lower interest rates create no market for financial assets? Well, it leads to reports like The Japanese technology firm SoftBank, which is going to invest $50 billion in the United States. The SoftBank already owns the majority of telecoms firm Sprint in the country, but it's clashed with American regulators over plans to buy T-Mobile. Faced with near zero interest rates at home and soft demand for corporate loans, Japanese commercial banks have also continued to look abroad for profits. So the Japanese government is keeping Japanese commercial institutions afloat, and those commercial institutions are investing in foreign countries. This has to be the quickest and most efficient way to funnel money out of a country without getting into Paul Manafort levels of trouble. So let's circle back to interest rates, because I kind of left that thread dangling. The central bank basically sets all of the interest rates in the economy with this one rate. We're talking about the rate you get from your bank for keeping your money in a savings account and even the rate at which banks can charge on top of their loans. So if your country has a low interest rates, banks will probably decide to look towards America's higher interest rates. And we'll take it. We love debt. We love debt so much we elected this guy to represent us. I call myself the king of debt. I'm the king of debt. Since the recovery from the financial collapse, we've seen Japanese banks lend a ton of money to Americans because of our favorable rates. And more significantly, we've seen a 30% increase in Japanese people investing their money in US companies in the last five years. So this combination of events is making things seem pretty bad for Japan. But don't worry, it's not time to say goodbye kitty quite yet. Because I think there's one more question on everybody's minds. Why not raise rates? Generally, I'd say don't raise rates because that encourages people to save in banks rather than spend. But in this case, people are already not buying anything. A month ago we heard, Japan's central bank has left its main interest rate unchanged. That wasn't too much of a surprise, but it defied market expectations of a major reduction in its economic stimulus program. Instead, it said it would continue to buy more than $700 billion worth of bonds a year. Bold move. You're cutting your spending to not all of the bonds. Only $700 billion worth a year. You better hope someone else buys the rest though, or else your literal trillions of bonds that you've accumulated over the last five years are going down in value. And that's no idle threat. The Bank of Japan could lose tens or even hundreds of billions of dollars with slight drops in bond prices, and the value of its nearly five trillion dollars in assets will fall. So again, this all sounds terrible, but something weird is happening in Japan. Because, well, Nothing's happening in Japan. Inflation has been zero despite the fact that the government is making it rain like a soon-to-be bankrupt rapper at a club with money that they're printing. GDP is growing a little, not too fast, not too slow. Wages are staying the same. And most significantly, nobody's spending any money. What you're starting to see is the consequences or the negative side effect of this prolongment of this long-term continuation of this low interest rate. So obviously um, you're seeing the banks that are screaming and also um, the Japanese companies aren't really reacting to lowered rates to start investing in spite of the fact that you know they're, they're flourished with profit. Yeah, this was really hard for me to understand because we literally need to make laws to stop American companies from spending all of their money going into debt, and then spending everything they borrowed. Now, I'm not sure if it's racist to judge Japanese companies or not, but... Due to the fact that Japanese companies are very conservative and they want to sustain cash at hand rather than just investing it. This led me to a different, deeper question. Why isn't inflation going up in Japan? I mean, everyone has so much cash, you'd think that that would bump up prices a little. 
Well, according to a document published by the Bank of Japan, the lack of inflation is attributable to a combination of factors, such as firms' cautious wage and price setting stance and households' continuous cautiousness towards price raises. I swear, if I read the word cautiousness one more time researching this, basically, when there is any rise in price, consumers just stop buying things. So no matter how much new money is introduced, inflation will stay about the same, zero. People are just saving the rest under their bed so it can't be invested. In fact, when the government introduced a somewhat negligible sales tax a few years ago, Bad news for Japan. The world's third largest economy has unexpectedly slid into recession. This comes after a rise in the national sales tax resulted in reduced consumer spending. So to summarize, because this is all very weird to an outsider, this might be one of the weirdest episodes of this show I've written. Forbes magazine says that the Japanese government will continue to issue debt to support the Japanese population's saving habits. The Bank of Japan will continue to monetize or buy that debt. Inflation will remain on the floor and interest rates will remain zero or negative. This is potentially a stable economic model. Well, that's really, really weird, but okay. Nobody knows exactly how much money is sitting under mattresses, but I've found an estimate that in 2015, before the rates went negative, it was north of 7.33 trillion US dollars. Not including all of the cash on hand Japanese corporations are just sitting on, and it's gone up a lot since then. The Bank of Japan has said it will continue to print money for the foreseeable future, and I guess the biggest threat to their economy is consumer confidence and domestic investment. Thank you and that's all I have to say about that. Hey guys, don't think I'm going soft on you because I don't publish episodes for a week. I'm going on vacation, so I won't be producing any content. I'm going to be the one place where I'll be able to get my head out of politics. Washington DC. Anyways, I'll be home Wednesday, so hopefully I'll have an episode out next Thursday or Friday. Hello YouTube, I hope you enjoyed this video. If you want to support independent nonpartisan comedy news, remember to subscribe by clicking this floating logo to the right of my head. Or do it the old fashioned way by clicking the subscribe button below. Click that bell so that freedom will continue to ring. And remember to give me a thumbs up. And lastly, as always, thank you for watching.